Hello students. So this is the um, fourth video in the series of gastrointestinal pathology. And this video would deal with uh, the pathogenesis of inflammatory bowel disease. Now here I would like to mention that this pathogenesis of inflammatory bowel disease is uh, basically uh, it falls into the desirable to know category of uh, the topics in GIT. So uh, for undergraduates especially. So um, it is not that you will be you will frequently come across uh, questions on pathogenesis of uh, IBD in your theory papers or you will be frequently asked about uh, pathogenesis of IBD um, uh, in your vivas. Um, but uh, it's difficult to understand otherwise when you go through your textbooks. So I've tried to make it easy easier for you to understand. And uh, the reason behind making this video uh, was to uh, make the pathogenesis uh, easier for you all to understand, basically for the undergraduate students. So, uh, inflammatory bowel disease has been a global healthcare problem with a sustained increase in incidence. And it includes two major forms, the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis which are distinct chronic bowel relapsing inflammatory disorders. So both of these are chronic diseases and both of these are inflammatory disorders as the name suggests. <clears throat> now the highest prevalence of IBD was reported in Europe and North America. But since the early 90s, the incidence rate of IBD in Western countries has shown to as uh, gone down actually has started to drop but the incidence rate has actually come up in the newly industrialized countries of Asia, Africa and South America um, and India is also one of these. Now what is the basic mechanism underlying the pathogenesis? The basic mechanism uh, which you need to understand in this inflammatory bowel disorders is that uh, first there will be increased permeability of the epithelial cell junctions. So basically the permeability of the uh, tight cell intraepithelial cell junctions would increase. So because of that increased permeability between the epithelial cell in between the epithelial cells there will be influx of bacteria so there will be bacterial incursion and as the bacteria enters through the space between two epithelial cells so because of there would be some defect in mechanisms to phagocytose those bacteria so otherwise normally what would have been the normal process the bacteria when it enters it, it would have been phagocytosed and the bacteria which enters would have been removed. But what happens here is the bacteria enters because of the increased permeability but there are some defect in mechanisms to phagocytose those bacteria as a result of which there is launch of an inflammatory response which leads to the inflammatory bowel disease. Now let's see let's look into it in detail how it occurs. So what are the basic factors which are responsible for the ectopathogenesis of IBD? The factors are mainly the genetic factors, the gut microbial factors, the immunological factors and some environmental triggers. So you see that actually the IBD is multifactorial in origin. So there are multiple factors which are responsible for the or multiple factors which are responsible um, for the pathogenesis or for the uh, origin of IBD. Let us look into the genetic factors which are responsible for IBD. Now mutations in NOD2 has been the most studied one. NOD means nucleotide binding oligomerization domain 2. Now what is this NOT2? This NOT2 is an intracellular cytosolic receptor and what does it do? It, uh, it recognizes the peptidoglycan fragment of bacterial muramyl dipeptide. So this 
so what it does is it it is present inside the cell in the inside the epithelial cell where in the cytosol and what it it is a in the in the cytosol it acts as a receptor and receptor to what there is it acts as a receptor to the peptid peptidoglycan fragment of bacteria and that peptidoglycan fragment of bacteria is nothing but muromyel dipeptide now on binding with this muromyel dipeptide of bacteria autophagy is initiated leading to confinement of the bacteria within the autophagosomes and subsequent control of infection so this is what normally happens so first the bacterial muromyel dipeptide is recognized by this not to as a result of which autophagy is initiated leading to uh, confinement of the bacteria within the autophagosomes and subsequent control of infection but what happens in um, patients who are susceptible to ibd there are mutations in this not to so in mutated state not to cannot activate autophagy leading to development of infection and subsequent inflammation what are the epithelial defects now variety of defects in the intestinal epithelial tight junctions lead to influx of bacteria and their components leading to generation of inflammatory response as i told you uh, even in a uh, couple of slides ahead that there are also defects in the uh, intercellular tight junctions because of which the bacteria enters through that um, through the space between the uh, epithelial cells and what are these defects there may be mutation in the organic cation transporter slc22a4 which leads to defective trans epithelial transport or there may be even defects in extracellular barrier formed by the secreted mucin which may also contribute to the formation of or development of ibd and sometimes the panet cell granules which contain antibacterial peptides termed defensins are abnormal so normally the panet cells uh, the, they have some granules which contain some antibacterial peptides called defensins now these defensins are they act against the bacteria to um, to kill them or to nullify their effects but there the these defensins are also abnormal because of which the bacterial bacterial uh, the i mean they cannot act against the bacteria as a result of which the inflammatory responses uh, generated coming to the next important factor which is responsible for generation of this response the microbial factors now as you all know the gastrointestinal tract of human body is colonized at birth by a vast range of microorganisms that numerically exceed host cells by around 10 times so it is much more than the number of the cells in the human body and these bacteria of are of around 1000 to 5000 different species of which 99% come from these species like firmicutes bacteridiotes proteobacteria and actinobacteria now this gut microbiota is necessary for intestinal homeostasis and function health and disease so you all must be knowing from your physiology knowledge that this gut microbiota is actually necessary for maintaining the balance maintaining the balance between health and disease so tolerance to gut microbiota must be maintained to benefit from their coexistence on the contrary colonization with specific pathogenic microbes might be detrimental to the host leading to disease so there must be the balance between the gut microbiota the common cells and the pathogenic microbes which may be detrimental to the host now these microbes they can be detected by presence of some 
patterns in them and these patterns are pathogen associated molecular patterns or pamps p a m p pamps and to recognize these patterns there are some pattern recognition receptors which are present in the cells of the uh, epithelium now recognition of these uh, pathogen associated molecular patterns by their corresponding receptors activates the innate immune system leading to generation of the inflammatory response so when the receptors recognize their corresponding uh, um, microbial pamp so there is an activation of the immune system leading to generation of an inflammatory response now these molecular patterns present on the microbes are very small molecular motifs and which are conserved within the species of non pathogenic and pathogenic microbes and because of the reason that they are that, that they are so small the receptors are sometimes largely unable to distinguish between the non pathogenic and the pathogenic microbes this leads to activation of innate immunity to commensal microorganisms at i mean during some um, i mean in some genetically susceptible individual and this imbalance of these interactions contribute to development of intestinal inflammation so next coming to the immunological factors now available literature and evidence um, which are um, present till date they suggest that dysfunctions of innate and adaptive immune pathways both of these contribute to the aberrant intestinal inflammatory response in patients with ibd however most studies in the recent decades have focused on the role of abnormal adaptive immune responses in the pathogenesis of ibd so the studies have now concentrated on mostly on the adaptive immunity coming to the role of innate immunity Uh, you all must be knowing that innate what is the innate uh, immunity in us the innate immune response represents our first line of defense against pathogens so it is non specific allowing the body to quickly respond to any kind of stimulus within minutes or hours and this response is mediated by a large variety of different cell types including epithelial cells neutrophils dendritic cells and so on now this form of this form of immunity is initiated by recognition of the microbial antigens which is mediated by the i mean the receptors which we, which we had already talked about the pattern recognition receptors examples of which are tlrs on the cell surface and nod like receptors in the cytoplasm and since we have already discussed that recent studies have found the behavior of the cells mediating innate immunity and the expression and function of both tlrs and nod proteins are altered significantly in individuals with ibd so we have already discussed that there are some alterations mutations in uh, not to in in genetically susceptible individuals so as a result of which the there is a altered immune response which is generated against the i mean in the individual this ultimately leads to mechanisms of defective autophagy and generation of altered inflammatory response
coming to adaptive immunity. Now, adaptive immunity, you all know that on the contrary, it is highly specific, often takes several days to respond and depends on the type and number of the T cells. Now, if we look at the T helper 1 cells induced by interleukin 12, they produce high amount of interferon gamma, whereas T helper 2 cells, they release interleukin 4, 5 and interleukin 13. Now, it has been uh, studied and found out that an abnormal T helper 1 immune response is thought to cause intestinal inflammation in Crohn's disease and it has been observed that mucosal T cells from Crohn's disease patients produce higher amounts of IL-2, interleukin-2 and interferon gamma. And it has also been studied that in ulcerative colitis, atypical NK T cells release higher amounts of T helper 2 cytokine interleukin-13 than T cells from controls or CD patients too. Therefore, Crohn's disease has been thought to be characterized by a T helper 1 immune response while ulcerative colitis has been considered as a T helper 2 mediated disease. So although this picture is not very clear here, out here, so here you can see that the bacteria which are present here at the surface of the gastric epithelial cells, they gain access through the gap in between the epithelial cells because of the defective intracellular uh, cell junctions, the bacterial bacteria and the bacterial products, they gain access in inside the, I mean, through the um, intraepithelial junctions. They are presented to the antigen presenting cell, that is the dendritic cell, and as a result of which a T cell immune response is generated. And it has been seen that this T helper cell one response here is specific for Crohn's disease and T helper 2 response is specific for patients of ulcerative colitis. Now to summarize, we have to come to one model that unifies the role of genetics, intestinal microbiota, epithelial function and mucosal immunity. So all these four things have to be uh, unified into one model. Therefore, it can be thus summarized that in a genetically susceptible individual, the de defective processes of autophagy causes release of TNF and other immune mediated signals which direct epithelia to increase the tight junction permeability leading to further increase in flux of the luminal material. So that is the summary. So the individual has to be genetically susceptible because of the, um, because of the individual being genetically susceptible, the defective processes of autophagy will be there. That will cause release of um, some cytokines like TNF and other immune media and activation of some other immune mediated signals which will ultimately lead to um, uh, to uh, increase the permeability of the epithelial cell junctions and further increase of um, bacterial incursion. So that is the summary of the pathogenesis. So I know it's exhaustive and it's, I mean, like for undergraduates, it is exhaustive because uh, all the mechanisms and all the, uh, I mean, I mean, all the intric intricate details cannot be uh, sh shared or it is uh, difficult to, I mean, uh, bring in everything to be um, taught to the undergraduates. 
but then this this was the only way it could be simplified uh, but then as i already told you that it it falls into the desirable to know category of uh, your undergraduate uh, syllabus or curriculum whatever you say so it is up to you how much you um, how much you acquire from this video or how much you take in from this video so thank you for your attention i will come up with the details of crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis in the next video thank you